two, one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what is up? ADS Play 101 here, and welcome to the first live Q&A I am hosting on TikTok. If you're not familiar with my platforms, my TikTok is ADS Play 101, my YouTube is ADS Play 101, and this is my first time trying a, a live Q&A. Uh, I announced it a couple, like a week ago, uh, made the announcement video two days ago, I was late to that, my bad. Uh, this is my first live q and I'm going to try to get it running, I would say about like a good 20-25 minutes Have some fun, you know, if need be, I'll go longer with it But uh, I'm interested in seeing what the questions are The questions that have been submitted um, If you guys want to submit your questions, you can do, do so via PayPal and Venmo at ADSplay101, you see it scrolling across the screen or if you want to go to cash app and donate and ask a question there it's dollar sign ads play 101 i will be prioritizing tip donations over the other ones so if you really want your question answered that bad and want me to get to it right away you know what to do with that being said appreciate y'all viewership so let's get this started so Let's go to the live right now. So we got MK Jade asks, what would your real life Pokemon team be? You get one legendary. Um, I would say, give me Annihilate. Give me Dragonite. Gengar. Haxor Give me Bronze Gong and Mewtwo That'll be my Pokemon team I get one legendary I'm picking Mewtwo over, over all of them Arceus might be a god Pokemon, but he ain't all that. He needs door panels to even access a type. Anyway. So let's go to the Q&As, the questions from uh, TikTok. Let me see right here. So CG Mainer asks, what keeps you going every day? Um, curiosity as to what the next day is going to bring. That's basically the main thing that keeps me going. Especially if I have something planned and I want to see that plan go through. That's what keeps me going every day. The curiosity of what tomorrow holds. You know, that makes me that, that makes me get up every morning just to see what what lies ahead. Discovering something new, a new song or anything that I haven't seen before. Or looking forward to the next episode of anime that I like watching. <laughs> Uh, where's your favorite place to go for the summer? Um, I haven't really went to too many places during the summer. There was only one place I really wanted to go, and that was uh, New Orleans. I, I'm I'm originally from New Orleans anyway. I'm from Louisiana first and foremost, but I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana. I was born there, born at West Jefferson Hospital on the West Bank, Algiers, um, and I moved to another city called Ruston, which is in like the northeastern part of Louisiana. And if you're not familiar with Ruston, it's kind of like in between Monroe and Shreveport, which are two of the bigger cities in, in that region of Louisiana. So, but it's all like the 318 though. That's the area code. But, but yeah, I always wanted to go to New Orleans. Like I never really wanted to go nowhere else. Because I, I miss the food, I miss the atmosphere, I miss the vibes down there. So that's that's my favorite place to go, New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, keep scrolling down, um, and that was by Dwight Lawarzi. Lo that was by Dwight Lawarzi. So you got GG fifteen sixty seven. Which movie have you watched more than three times? Shit. 
the original Double Dragon movie. If you remember the original Double Dragon, I should have pulled up a a website image while the music is playing just to look this stuff up. So I'm, I'm pretty sure I was going to need this, and I didn't know why I didn't think about it. Like I said, the original Double Dragon movie. Let me get this up real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, Chrome. I just put this above everything else. Just pop it up whenever I need to. So the original Double Dragon, I don't know when it came out. Nineteen ninety four. It was the original Double Dragon movie. I found this at a uh, there was a grocery store called Albertsons, and Albertsons had like a uh, a little video game rental movie department. At, uh, like as soon as you walk in the store, and this was the movie that I I remember getting from there. No, no, it wasn't uh, Albertsons. It was another store. I can't remember the name of it, but this was the original Double Dragon. Right here. Now that I think about it, is that Michael J. Fox? And who was the cast for this? Starring Robert Patrick. No, Scott. Oh, never mind. That's Scott Wolf. I know I've seen him. He played in some stuff before. Party of Five. I thought he was in like a video game or something. I guess not. I could have sworn I've seen this doing like a video game or something. I just can't think of it. But no, Double Dragon most definitely. That, that, I've seen this well more than like three times. It was a looking back at it, it was probably one of the one of them terrible action movies that was based on a video game, like Street Fighter was, and I wouldn't say Mortal Kombat was bad, but this definitely was up there with one of those bad live action movies. I liked the hell out of it when I was a kid though. That uh, Power Rangers Turbo, that movie. The Power Rangers Turbo movie. That right there. I need you. I'm doing a live Q and A right now, uh, so, so that's what's happening at that at the moment. Um, but yeah, Power Rangers Turbo. That definitely was um was one movie I seen more than three times. Shoot, like I still remember the kung fu choreography from all that. I'm not doing it though. <laughs> uh, what a anything from Disney in the early '90s. Let's see, The Lion King. Anything that had that original case. Yeah, the ones that had like them book cases. The Lion King. Um, what other movie that didn't? Jungle Book. Uh, right here. It was this one. It was this one. Jungle Book, that one. Sheer Khan, Baloo, all of them. What was another movie I used to watch more than three times? Uh, honestly, like The Little Mermaid, the original Little Mermaid. I haven't seen the remake yet. With the one with Princess Ariel, right here. This one. Uh, 
What were some other movies? The Big Green. The Big Green. This one right here. I seen that. This was back when we was in high school and Fridays the teacher used to roll them them uh carts with the with the TV and the VCR into the room. So that was my uh I remember that. Um that definitely was one of the movies I've seen more than three times. I think it was another one. Uh, I'm trying to think of it. The Big Green. I think Mighty Ducks. I think it's called D3 Mighty Ducks. Yeah, it was this. Okay, yeah. So this was the. Um, this was the movie. D3 Mighty Ducks. I'm pretty sure that's on Disney. Oh, it is on Disney Plus. Yeah, that was one of the movies. I watched the hell out of that when I was little. And, um... Yeah, just anything from that earlier Disney... Aladdin. Yeah, the original Aladdin. Aladdin 1, 2, and I think they made a part 3, right? Aladdin 2, like, The Return of Jafar. Yeah, it was. And, and I, I think they had a part three. The King of Thieves. Okay. Aladdin and the King of Thieves. Yeah. I've seen all these. I vaguely remember uh, Aladdin and the King of Thieves. Because I, I watched that a lot less than the, than the first two. But I definitely seen that a lot. I definitely seen it a lot. Alright, All right, next question. Ooh, why did that close? Who is your favorite who is your best or favorite TikToker? Um I have a couple. One is a dude called King Lion because this dude's comic book knowledge is unparalleled. And it's another dude named Moses the Prophet. He's a very intelligent intelligent brother that got lied on a lot and he proved people wrong and he's still trying to go with the lie. So those are my top two. King Lion and Moses the Prophet. Uh, what is your dream job? My dream job is to be a software developer for a gaming company. If not, no, better yet, my dream job is to own, well, not job, but career, is to own my own video game studio. Because I feel like a lot of these companies don't make video games the way they should, and it will be a dream just to have my own video game studio where I can make a budget, create license, you know, uh, buy licenses to make the video games that I've always wanted as a kid. Like I've, I've been waiting on an open world Inuyasha game since the early 2000s and we never got one. They made some half-ass fighting game and another whack-ass RPG. Like we didn't get no good I, th I think Cartoon Network had like a little interactive tactical RPG with a uh, with Inuyasha, but uh, them, them the only three I ever played. Inuyasha hasn't had any good games for real. That's why they stopped making them. It's not that nobody cares. It's just that the game that people want, we want to run around feudal the feudal era and do backlash waves and fucking an adamant barrage and back. You know what I'm saying? And wind scars. Like we want to be able to do that. Like we don't want to, you know, Iron Reaper Soul Stealers and all that. That's what we want to do. We don't want. Any anything other than that, Inuyasha needs to be an open world game, and I would like to be have a studio to where I can get the licenses to make that, and, and as well as other games. It makes you feel great. Being black. Because I like the way we do us. I'm not talking about the ignorant bullshit in the in a lot of the places that I was, that's out there, but when black people, we on it, we on it. If you know, you know. That's what makes me feel great. 
what's your favorite thing about Halloween? Um, I don't really do Halloween like that, but when I did, uh, I guess the free candy, that's the only thing you can really have, I mean, that's the only thing to really look forward to, free candy, I mean, shoot, hey, I'm still a kid at heart, hey, look, look, we used to walk around with, like, giant bags, the, the big brown grocery bags, and we used to go knock on every door in the neighborhood, like, three times just to get free candy, like, and we used to have that bag filled up to the brim, you know what I'm saying, to the brim, and that was that's the fa most favorite thing i mean nowadays i mean i guess dressing up if you go to halloween parties but i don't really go to halloween parties because people people are crazy people are crazy no i don't go to halloween parties or nothing like that i don't even celebrate halloween but when i did as a kid it was a uh, you know i mean because you get older certain things just ain't for you no more you know what i mean and Halloween was known for the free candy. It was like, eh, free candy is, you know, I, I could just go buy whatever candy I want now. I'm grown. So, you know, was, I don't got to wait for Halloween. So, that, but free candy most definitely was my favorite part. And that was from the Queen of the Pumpkin Patch. Lawyee191 says, what do, what are you doing to invest in your relationship? Uh, you have to be more specific. Um... I don't know if you meant with God or if you meant with a woman. Um, I guess I'll answer both of those because I don't know what you meant. Or in myself. Like, I don't know. Well, if, if you're talking about my relationship with God, it's it's solid, you know. Uh, like, I'm an Israelite, so that's self-explanatory. Uh, if you know, you know. Um, as far as my relationship with a woman, I, uh, I haven't seen too many women out here that's on their shit to really make me want to, like, invest time in it. The past couple relationships I had kind of went, like, just for them to make a U-turn to try to come back over here after they didn't did me dirty. So, it's like I'm kind of just off, off of relationships for the time being. It would be nice to have that woman that, you know what I'm saying, understands you and... You know, as a man, to have a woman that understands you and loves you and wants to get with you and build with you, you know, but unfortunately, it's like too many arrogant women out here these days, especially in California. If I was living in the South, I'm pretty sure my story would be different. You know, these women out here don't even know how to cook. I had a joke where I said that uh, if you find a woman in this area that knows how to boil water, you hit the jackpot. So, <laughs> truth be told, it's like... It's just, uh, it's hard to find somebody that got their head on straight. Because everybody want to act damn crazy. Um, and that was from Law E91. Uh, I, after these, I, I'm going to get to the live questions. So y'all guys just uh, be patient with me. How would you recommend getting started with meditation? Well, you have to practice. The, you got it, champ. Uh, is the one asking the question. You have to... Um, just get started with it just put on some soothing lo-fi music kind of like what i'm playing right now i don't know how well you guys can hear it but um just close your eyes and stay still just calm your mind it's not gonna happen right away you know it takes well it, it's it, it took me years to learn how to actually meditate and relax now when it comes to meditation meditation doesn't necessarily mean like you sitting in like indian stance doing at home and all that like that's not you know what i'm saying sometimes it's just taking your taking your like going to a park taking the shoes off your feet and just walking walking on the grass you can meditate like that it gives you a natural high of just being in a serene space that's quiet and that's you know puts you in a, a very zen state to where you could just focus on just being in a blissful moment, you know. And sometimes it does require for you to just lay back and with your eyes closed listening to music. That's meditation. You know, sometimes I put on headphones when I want to meditate and just listen to lo-fi music or any lo-fi mix. 
uh, on YouTube, you know what I'm saying, anything that's Nujibus, uh, anything, I'm pretty sure I pronounced his name wrong, and I'm so sorry for the fans if I did, but anything that's Nujibus, anything lo-fi, any type of Japanese, uh, Korean hip-hop that got like a lo-fi tone to it, any American music that got a lo-fi tone to it, hip-hop, of course, uh, even some alternative rock. I don't really listen to heavy metal like that because that's always upbeat and like, like, but you know anything that's um anything that's lo-fi that can uh you know that can calm you down and put you in a in a relaxed state of mind. Try to listen to that stuff. Uh, what's your favorite color of French bulldog? I haven't owned that many French bulldogs. I haven't had too many French Bulldogs. I, I think only, and I haven't seen that many in real life anyway. Like, I think the only French Bulldog I've seen was like, and I could be wrong, people who are more familiar with dog breeds don't get on my ass, but um, it was like a, a white Bulldog with like brown spots. That would probably be like my favorite color one. A white with brown spots. Oh, shoot, let me back up. Uh, what kind of bubble tea do you like? You know what's funny? I have not had bubble tea that much in my life. Bubble, the, I, I think I had bubble tea like once or twice in my entire life. Like, for example, like I'm 34. I've only had bubble tea like twice in my entire life. And the two times I've had it, I can't remember the first time. No, no, I take that back. I only had it once and I ordered two. I ordered two and I got uh, a dragon fruit. I think it was like a dragon fruit apple or like a dragon fruit mango or something like that. And the other one was like, I think it was like a grape watermelon. I don't really know. It, it's, it's a bubble tea place over here. I can't remember. It was so long ago since I had those. They were good and like the little uh, fruit pearls that's at the bottom that's filled with like fruit juice those is good too but yeah I haven't uh, only had it twice you know but if you have any suggestions on bubble tea that, I mean hey let me know um, TikTok Q&A what is the best recipe for a hamburger uh, first off you gotta get you some good lean ground beef right then you get a cast iron skillet you get you a spatula and a, or anything that you can use to push down on it make a smash burger right you get you some caramelized onions you know of course you got to season it with black pepper a little bit of salt just a little bit of salt you don't need that much maybe some cajun seasoning or anything else that you would prefer to use but most certainly black pepper and salt you smash those burgers down to where you want to get that good, good crust on it. You know what I'm saying? And you got to do two of them. You got to do two of them so you can stack them. Put some nice, good cheese on there. You know what I'm saying? Some good cheddar. You know what I'm saying? And get you a nice, spicy aioli. You know what I'm saying? For the sauce. A nice, spicy aioli. A nice, spicy garlic aioli or something like that. Or, or even maybe even like a mustard aioli if you're that type of person. But most certainly like a garlic variation. And you just spread it on that bun. First off, you got to toast the bun too. You got to toast it. Whether you use a toaster oven, whether you use the skillet itself, just toast it. Get that, get the inside of that bun nice and crispy. And then you just stack that burger on there. A couple tomatoes, some of them caramelized onions, maybe a little bit of lettuce if you're careful. It. Put some of that garlic aioli on there. And then you just eat. Bust. <laughs> but that's my favorite hamburger recipe. Uh, what dinosaur do you think is overrated? Jurassic's edits. Uh, the T-Rex. I think the T-Rex is highly underrated. Uh, overrated. For some reason, I, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm just ignorant. Because none of us actually live with dinosaurs. I mean... So, we don't really know. You know, we only go off of their skeletal remains or how big they were. We don't know how smart or dumb these dinosaurs actually was. So, I don't know. 
something about the T-Rex just make me feel like I don't know. I think there's like a a, a sensationalism because of like the, the of the like Jurassic Park movies. They made them seem a lot scarier than what they probably actually were, or made people seem like they couldn't get away from them as much as they probably could have, as long as you ain't tripping over your own shoelaces. I mean, I ain't saying they're not giant, and I'm not saying they they have a longer stride, so they might be able to catch up. But I don't know. It's like. They've been sensationalized to the point where they're like the scariest dinosaur. And I'm just like, are they really? We will never know because we don't live with dinosaurs. So I don't know. What's your thoughts on the future of footwear? And he has the Mario boots. Hey, let me look at No oh, wow, stuff. Yeah. The future of footwear. Well, when you have shoes like this, And I actually seen these Mario boots in real life. Why somebody would actually make these and charge? How much they wanted for them Mario boots? Like what, 1500 to look stupid? I'm good. I think the future of footwear is like the brands that are highly popular are gonna be less liked over time and that the ones that are less popular, for example, like Supras, um, and other, you know, shoes, other shoe brands out there. I, I know it's quite a few, uh, but I think people are going to, as far as Jordans and Nikes, I don't think they're ever going to go out of style, but especially Jordans, people attach Jordans to financial freedom and they want to feel at a piece of financial freedom when, when they... Uh, buy a pair or that they want to feel like they have a little bit of financial freedom when they buy a pair of Jordans so they always going to invest time and money in there because it's a status of wealth to them so because of that you know I know some people who make a lot of poor financial decisions that'll go out and be and that, that will go out and buy a pair of Jordans and then make fun of somebody that actually has their shit together because they don't care to buy Jordans you know, so like me, for example, I don't buy Jordans at all. Of course, it was a time when I was younger that I wanted them and I thought they were a fly as shoe. But then you look at other shoe brands out there. It's like Jordan don't even make these style of shoes. So, I mean, yeah, I don't really care for them. I think they're overpriced. And then people go crazy because they look at the status of a Jordan or a pair of Nikes and they want to kill people for them. So that's even more reason for me to like stay away from them. And then for the shoes out there that uh, get bought up, like, for example, like, I remember I seen a documentary on somebody who was using bots to purchase shoes at release. And they, they was using the bots to, like, buy the shoes the moment that they dropped. And they was just scalping the shoes and they would sell them for you know, two to three times the amount on like a third party website like like uh, StockX or anything like that. And it's just, when, when that happened, like the moment we started seeing shoes like Air Force Ones or like the all white Nikes go for like $200 when those things was like $100 tops. And that's not because of inflation, that's because people were scalping the shoes and then reselling them on websites. To, for, for like a higher price and it got so bad to where I think that's going to be to the point where the bubble's going to burst and then people are not going to care to buy certain shoe brands no more and we're already starting to see it you know people don't even want to wear Nike Dunks no more like Nike Dunks did not cost 1500 you know what I'm saying that wasn't like an overpriced shoe like that you know what I'm saying like I'm starting to see people wear certain Nikes that's like you wouldn't even believe those shoes used to be like a hundred dollars, 150 tops. So, but as far as like overall, I mean, people see a high price tag and they want to associate themselves with the people who can actually afford to buy those things. So they'll make a poor decision with, uh, you know, buying those shoes and put themselves in a situation where they don't need to. So as far as the future of footwear, 
I think, again, popular shoe brands are going to go on a decline soon. And shoe brands that aren't so popular are going to get a... You're going to see them more. I know that was a mouthful. What's your favorite bike? A mongoose. That's the main one I know. <laughs> a mongoose. Or as the ignorant people out there say, a mongoose. What's your best attire? My best attire would be well it depends on the season right or it depends on if it's hot or cold outside if it's hot outside um i wear a nice short sleeve uh polo shirt with a with a nice pair of blue blue jeans um you know jeans have to be uh stone washed Maybe some uh, some tears in them, you know, and uh, a nice pair of kicks, you know, some shades, you know what I'm saying, and a nice cap with a bent brim, you know, that would be my best attire. What's the funniest thing your dog has ever done? Well, I don't own a dog. But the funniest thing I've seen a dog do was hunt, hump somebody's leg in the middle of a grocery store. Yeah. Do you drink bubble tea often? No, I do not. Why do you like baked? Do you like baked beans and why? I do not like baked beans. For the simple fact of flatulence. Flatulence. That's like the main thing I don't, I don't like about baked beans. Flatulence. And we're already at 32, 32 minutes. What do you see differently as a parent? Well, I'm not a parent, so I, I don't think I'm qualified to answer that question. One, I can't answer it. Um, I'm not a parent, though, but I know how sensitive some people are when it comes to not having any kids yourself and you're asking a question, like answering a question like that. So I'm going to skip that one. What is your favorite food your mom used to cook? Gumbo. gumbo I miss gumbo so much even though I don't eat crab and shrimp and all that and pork I, I don't I don't eat none of that stuff but I miss gumbo bro I miss just a just a hearty pot of gumbo it, it, it could be chicken and turkey sausage I don't care chicken and beef sausage just gumbo that that flavor you feel me of a good bowl of gumbo with a side of potato salad made the right way the right way nothing beats that I haven't had gumbo in so many years bruh if I see a pot of gumbo I might go crazy I'm not gonna lie to you I like gumbo so much it's like when you grew up on something and you don't have access to it anymore or if you had to make it yourself you feel like it's just not gonna taste the same you know what I'm saying? Like you just wanted, you know what I'm saying? Like like you want your favorite elder to make it because you know they got that arm fat that got like the recipes in it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you the ones that's known for cooking in the family. When they make that gumbo, it hit different. It hit different. When mama or auntie make that gumbo, bro, it's different. It's different. Yeah, what's the most underrated Nintendo game? Mm. That's a good question. What's the most underrated Nintendo game? Nintendo game. I, I said Nintendo. That was so country, bro. That's a good question. The most underrated Nintendo game. Let's see if I can jog my memory. Let's open up. Uh, let's open this back up. Let's see. Nintendo games. Uh, yeah, let's say Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo. A list of Super Nintendo games. 
um, <laughs> Super Nintendo Library. Let's see the library of games they got. Because there's so many that I can't even begin to tell you. Like, I need to see a list to jog my memory of how many games they got. Okay. Three Ninjas Kickback. Nobody care for that. Um, Animation Factory. Uh, the Adams Family. That was... I don't remember the Adams Family being that good, so I can't put that in. Aerial Fighters. And, uh... Was Windjammers... No, no, that was Neo Geo. Windjammers was Neo Geo. I was going to say, Windjammers don't get talked about enough. Art of Fighting. Art of Fighting was dope. I don't think it's underrated, though. I think it's where it's supposed to be. Um, you know what? Earthworm Jim. Earthworm Jim. That was a that, that's a that's a, a, a good game that's not talked about a lot. Earthworm Jim. Battle Toads and Battle Maniacs. Is this the one that I played? Double, Battle Toads and Double Dragons. That's another one that's not talked about a lot. So that's underrated. Battle Toads and Double Dragon. Um. Battle Zenden. I don't, I don't remember this. And I played a lot of Japanese imports. I really don't remember this. Yeah. Big Sky Trooper. I don't remember that one. Biker Mice from Mars. I don't remember them. I don't. I remember the game coming out. I just don't remember playing it. Black Thorn, Black Hawk, Bounty Sword, Breath of Fire. Was this the one? No, this ain't the one. It's not it. I don't know if that's the, the game I'm thinking about. That's. It was one of those that was. Uh, I played. Coma Knight in Busy Land, and, uh, Captain Subasa. Low key, I feel like I mean, if you're a fan of like soccer games or football, if you're living in a different country, uh, Captain Subasa was a good um, soccer game. I feel like that's underrated. Slam. I don't remember that. Cool spot. This was another one. Cool spot. This was back when Seven Up had the uh, the little red cool spot um, mascot. They made a video game for that, and that was a fun game. That's underrated. Uh, Cyber Knight. Don't remember that too much. Cyborg Zero Zero Nine. I didn't play that one. A lot of these games is just unknown. I don't remember anything really being uh, underrated like that. Um, Doom Troopers. That's probably an underrated game. Because a lot of people don't know about it. The Dragon Ball games on Super Nintendo. Yeah, I, I play these. Those are definitely underrated. The Dragon Ball games on Super Nintendo. Those are definitely underrated. Um, the Dragon Slayer series. That's underrated. But a lot of these, again, I played a lot of Japanese imports. So a lot of people didn't. Uh, oh, the dual drive test. That's an underrated one. Uh, not Dragon Master. Earth Defense Force. Wouldn't really say it's underrated, but a lot of people just don't know. I wouldn't dare say that Earthbound is underrated because the people that know, know. They know how good that game is. That's, that's a classic RPG. Final Fight. 
not really. No, not Fire Emblem. That's a that's a classic. Um, really, I want to see if Windjammers was. I keep thinking Windjammers was on. Uh, I know I skipped a lot, but I want to see if Windjammers was on. Any wrestling game that came that, that was a part of that was uh was cool. Yoshi's Cookie. I don't remember none of them Yoshi games. Um, Windjammers was an on. Winter Olympics winter. Nah, like Windjammers was a wild. WID. Yeah, like yeah, like we didn't get Windjammers. That was a school, that was on Neo Geo. World Heroes. World Heroes was known for the wrong reasons. If you know, you know. X Men that was underrated. Mutant Apocalypse. You hear another p- the the Ease the Ease series that was underrated. You really don't hear people talking about how good that was. Ease was cool. E series is cool. Um, are you afraid of bees and do you let them near you? Um, I used to be afraid of bees, but honey bees, I can just let them land on my finger. Like I don't, I'm not afraid of them at all. What kind of hummus do you like? Ooh, I swear I could turn it to a fat kid. <laughs> hummus. My first time having hummus was like three years ago. And I thought hummus was like, wasn't good until I had it. I ordered, I ordered some, some Mediterranean food and it had some hummus next to it. And I never had hummus before. It was like a combo plate and I tried it and I was like, this is what the fuck I've been missing out on. I had some hummus. I used to dip the falafels in the hummus and just go crazy. But I would say spicy black bean with harissa or harissa or whatever that spicy condiment is called that's my favorite hummus in a spinach artichoke what's your morning routine to get you going uh i do 100 push-ups every day um i try to run around the neighborhood early in the morning just to get the blood flowing uh come home shower and um make me some food drink some water and come on here and vibe on tiktok how do you unwind after a stressful day i beat my di- no <laughs> i'm joking i'm joking i'm joking i don't i don't do that <laughs> uh no nah, i don't do that but um just listen to some lo-fi music play some video games i remember the first when I was a kid, I used to have anger issues. I, I I didn't used to like beat people up. I just didn't know how to process anger. I didn't know how to process it. You know what I mean? I didn't know how to control it. I didn't know how to. Uh, I didn't know how to handle it. Like I, I didn't know. So what I used to do was like I used to play fighting games a lot. And uh, I know the news and all these ignorant ass older people that want to blame video games for a lot of dumb stuff that's going on in the world, but. Video games are actually very therapeutic. And this is before the video game popularity jumped off in like the 2017s, 2019s, especially during the 2020s when the pandemic hit. Um, I used to always, anytime I would be, you know, this is before I, I developed the backbone and I started defending myself, but when I was a kid and I used to get bullied, I used to get mad, I used to get upset at things I didn't understand or people was messing with me. I remember I used to go play a fighting game and in my mind, I used to pretend that the, the computer that I was beating up on represented everything that I didn't like and I used to just beat them up and that used to calm me down. You know what I'm saying? So, of course, when I got older and I started punching people in the face for messing with me, you know, that changed, but Video games have always been like that therapeutic. Even when I played RPGs, the computer I was going up against, 
I used to always pretend that they represented all the negative things that I didn't like and I used to just beat them up. And it, especially with tactical RPGs like Shining Force, it put me in a state of mind where I felt like I had to outsmart the negativity. So I used to kind of play tactical RPGs like Shining Force again and I used to, you know, beat the game because you have to be very strategic in games like that. So I used to put myself in a state of mind where I had to defend myself against negativity but i had to find a way to beat it and that kind of helped me out in the long run because it taught me to think before i act you know and that's the reason why i never been in jail i never been in trouble with the law never got arrested for nothing never you know what i'm saying did nothing crazy that would land me in jail so as far as people that want to say video games don't don't uh don't help video games help it's the parents that be raising them damn kids that be shooting up schools and all that. They don't want to take responsibility, so they use video games as a scapegoat. What's your skincare routine? Uh, Black Wolf. I use Black Wolf. Uh, and I try to shave my my, my, my little my, my little wannabe beard any chance I get. Um, that's basically my skincare routine. Uh, and I recently started doing that like a couple months ago, so that's my skincare routine. Uh, what is your ideal dream wedding? Wedding gown style. Well, I'm a dude, so I'm not going to be wearing a wedding gown. Wedding gown. But if I'm fortunate enough to get married one day, um, I would like my woman to wear an all-white dress with a golden or red, or red sash. A golden sash or a red sash. As a matter of fact, just have it, have it be like an, an, an eggshell white dress. An eggshell white dress. Um, with some undergarments on it, of course. Some sheer fabric. I don't know, man. Like I, I ain't never thought about, th thought about getting married like that. But if I'm fortunate enough to find a woman that got her head on straight to where she wants to pursue a long-term relationship I, and being married I, I would think that would be an ideal dress i would like seeing her wear what is your comfort show common rider common rider hands down matter of fact no i take that back um my comfort show is any anime that i really want to watch And I can't wait till the next episode comes out. That's my comfort show. Like, I have comfort shows, not just one show, but shows. I binge. Long gone are the times where I had to wait a week for just one episode to one anime. No, 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 no. I'm spoiled. <laughs> I got I got uh, anime websites that I can just watch any anime I want to, anytime I want to. So, that was Auditel. Auditele. Window mum, window mum. What do you do in your free time? Uh, play video games. Uh, plan out how I'm gonna go about my day to tomorrow. Uh, put in, put plans, put long-term plans into action, and just take it one step at a time. You know what I'm saying? Just try to keep my peace, keep my serenity. Uh, just try to like. Maintain my sanity in this crazy ass world we live in. You know, I don't try to do too much. I'm gonna have to check my phone out for a second. Alright, never mind. We good. What is your opinion on the in your opinion, what is the best remix you ever heard? Bust rhymes, touch it remix. I'm not gonna play it on screen, but just look it up. Buster Rhymes Touch It remix. It's between that and the Welcome to Atlanta remix. No, no. Yeah, it's between those two. The Buster Rhymes Touch It remix or the Welcome to Atlanta remix. Yeah. And that was by I Live in Your Walls. Does pineapples belong on pizza? Hell no. What the fuck? I don't want cheese with fruit. What the fuck? What the fuck? Which celebrity is your favorite? 
Um, I don't have a favorite celebrity. To be honest with you, I really don't have a favorite celebrity. Like, I don't. I, if I, I mean, if I really had to pick one, it would probably be Denzel Washington, or like, or maybe Samuel Jackson. One of those two. Um. But really, like my my favorite people in the entertainment industry, or you know, they're not that known. Like Gil Scott Heron, who was a poet. Check out any of his work. He was the one that made the revolution will not be televised. Um, I'll say KRS-One. Just because of his knowledge and contribution to hip hop, like that's always going to be one of my favorite people. Um, Lupe Fiasco because he rapped different. Ab Soul from Top Dog Entertainment, the guy who used to rap, a, who's, who's uh, he's amazing. Uh, Kendrick Lamar, he's another one. Um, it's, it's, it's a few of them out there, but I don't really have too many favorite celebrities or anything like that. What makes a relationship stronger? Trust and commitment. No, no, no. I'm going to say resolve. Trust, commitment, and resolve. You got those three things, you can't fail. You need trust to understand what you're going on, communication, uh, commitment, that no matter what, you're going to stand firm on that trust and resolve that no matter what happens, again, which is basically the same as commitment, but you're not going to let anybody interfere with what you and your, you know, the man or woman in your life has to, uh, has to offer you. You know, you, this is coming from somebody that's been cheated on. A, a, a relationship is a private swimming pool that nobody else is allowed into, right? On one side, you have your gate, and on the other side, she has her gate, Right? And both of y'all are going to be approached by various people to open up your gate and let people inside the pool, which is your y'all business, just so that they can be messy and nobody else is supposed to be in there besides y'all two. Your job is to tr trust that, you know, as a woman, your job is to make sure that the dude that you're with is keeping his gate closed and not entertaining the thought of opening it up to nobody else. And as the woman, you... As a man, you're supposed to trust that woman that she's not going to open up that gate and let no other guy in there. You know what I'm saying? Like, keep them gates closed. People going to want to be messy and, you know, because misery loves company. Keep your gates closed. Don't let nobody else in your business. I hope y'all got that analogy. What Disney characters do you like or love? Ooh. Well, first off, Simba. Aladdin, because he was the, to me, he was like the underdog. The ultimate underdog. Um, those two. I actually like Scar. Because he was the... Hey, you know what? Disney actually showed us somebody killing somebody. And that was in The Lion King. When he threw Mufasa off of the edge of that cliff. And he killed him. I say Scar is my favorite only because he exemplified what a villain should be. You know, how was Ramadan? I'm not Muslim, so I don't celebrate Ramadan. What's your favorite K-pop album? I don't have a favorite K-pop album. I heard very few K-pop songs in my lifetime. Matter of fact, one of my girlfriends uh, from the, like long ago, like one of like my girlfriend at the time, she was the one that introduced me to K-pop, like a K-pop group. I think the name of the group was called Shiny. I can't remember the name of it. Shiny was the name of the group. Um, yeah, that was the name of the group. I think the name of the song was called Lucifer or whatever. I don't remember. This was like early 2000. This was like 2010 around the time she introduced me to that song or that group. But I don't have a favorite K-pop album. What are your best recovery tips? Sleep. Sleep. That's the best recovery tip I can give you. Sleep. 
and get away from people. So, what are you most proud of? The fact that I survived this life for so damn long. The fact that I developed a sense of resolve to where I don't let stupid shit happen without checking it to prevent it from happening again. Do you like me? I don't even know you. Or do you believe that you will be rich one day? <laughs> Hell yeah. I'm working towards that as well. Can you help me get to 10K? No, I cannot, because I ain't even got 10K my damn self. I need your yes. Do you believe that God can change your situation in two seconds? No. It takes time. Time and dedication on your part. You can't just ask and not do anything. It don't work like that. But anyway. Who's the one person you will never stop loving? Well, the people. <laughs> I'm going to change that person to people. And I'm going to just say family. Family. Are you in a relationship? No, I am not. What's your favorite song at the moment? At the moment, I would say Love Sick Part 4. Because I heard it the other day. And that was... That shit was crazy do you believe god can change your story before the end of this month um he did that last month so <sighs> case closed if your ex texts i love you i want you back will you reply fuck no matter of fact I, I spoke on my exes earlier one of my exes that cheated on me actually in 2002 uh, not 2002 but 2022 she actually messaged me through facebook trying to apologize for cheating on me i didn't i blocked her as soon as she sent me that because like it was like a year after the after the fact and now you want to text me back now nah nah i don't need your apologies your time to apologize was you know what i'm saying way back when your apology was you having a thought and not acting on it that would have been your apology if i'm yours what what if I'm if I'm yours, what would you what name would you call me? Is this a dude? This is a damn dude. What the fuck? No no. I won't call you nothing. That wouldn't be reality. You believe in God? Hey, look, you die and you go to heaven and you, or you go to the other side and you see God and you tell me whether or not he's alive or not. I don't know. But I mean shit. Somebody created this world. Regardless if you think it was a big white man in the sky or some unknown entity that we don't even know about. Uh, Muslim, do you support me? Yeah. D do your thing. Why don't you trust people? Because people are crazy. Do you like me? I don't even know you. When you are tired of everything and the only thing that can keep... if When you are tired and the only thing you could think of is to give up what keeps you going. The fact that I know that my story is not supposed to end there. That's it. The fact that my story I know is not supposed to end there. So why bother? You know what I'm saying? Like, it makes no sense. So now I'm going to get to the live questions. Uh, no, I didn't get beat by computers. <laughs> Let me scroll up because some of y'all left some questions. Okay, I, I answered the Pokemon question already. Yeah, hell yeah, I'm glad you went on YouTube. Uh, what was that? Uh, are you playing Unite today? Uh, I might have some time to play Unite. Uh, what do you think about Treasure Planet? Treasure Planet. I don't remember that movie as much. Oh my god, Treasure Planet? I don't remember that movie too much. Oh, I did watch this. You know what? Hold up. This was one of those movies I seen. I remember this. I didn't know what the fuck this was called. I remember this movie. I remember this movie. I only seen it, seen it once though. I only seen it once. I didn't. I haven't seen it a lot. I only. I literally seen it once in my entire lifetime, and I could not remember the name of this movie. I remember this shit. I remember this. But it was a good movie though. I remember this though. But I only seen it one time. I might want to go back and watch it again. 
Matter of fact, I think I am going to go back and watch it again one day. But I remember that movie being so good. Who's your favorite rapper? Lupe Fiasco. Hands down. It's, it's three of them. It's Lupe Fiasco, Kendrick Lamar. And I would say KRS-One. In no particular order. Lupe Fiasco, Kendrick Lamar, and, and KRS-One. I asked the question, but I don't know if it's in the right spot. I mean, just ask it. Just ask it. Um, if it was Groundhog's Day and you were caught in a loop, what would be the song alarm you wake up to? Uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony wake. Uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony first of the month, because they actually got an alarm playing in the in the at the beginning of the song, so that would wake me up. Hey, what are you up to? Doing live Q and A. What game are you playing today? Um, I don't know. I may jump on some unite. He said, "Don't lie. I got beat by computers." Let's see that Giat pop out. What Giat? Oh, the Giat pop out. <laughs> nah, I don't want to see no Giat pop out. Um, I think somebody left a question. I, th I think that's gonna be the last one. I I'm gonna answer for this live Q and A. Um, let me see. Hold on. Let me uh, let me turn it off for a second. Turn it on for a second. And let me get to my live Q and A announcement video. Okay. So this is the question that somebody asked me. I think it was Turbocharge. Turbocharge asked me this yesterday, and I told him to save the question. So, what? Yo, what's your opinion on the EDP situation? So. EDP, if you don't know, remember who that is. He was the big fat black guy who tried to go meet some little kid, got caught, and the guys that caught him, he told him that he was he, he went there to get a cupcake or something like that. Um, supposedly he got caught again trying to go talk to some little girls, and he started begging for sympathy because apparently he had kidney issues and he's dying or something like that. I don't know. Look, here's my opinion on EDP, right? And I never spoke on, on this publicly because I don't really care to talk about people that do that type of stuff. Uh, EDP is an example of a man that needs to pay for pussy. There's too many options out here for you to get sex, for you to be going... You know, there's too many other options out here for you to, be, instead of you going after some little ass kids, man. That's never going to be good in nobody's eyes. So I don't know why people think that's all right. Um, it it kind of hurts me knowing that there's like a, a movement out there. It's literally a movement out there called the North American Man Boy Love Association. Literally, that's that's actually a a group that's lobbying to try to get pedophilia labeled as like a sexual preference instead of the sickness that it is. I'm not even joking. Like if you look up that the North American Man Boy Love Association. That's actually a real thing. That group started in like what the 1950s. Like I would actually look this up. Like this right here. This shit. This is literally. It's sick knowing that this is actually a group. Like. Let's go to Wikipedia. This started in 1978. My bad. December 2nd, 1978. And the founder was by a dude named David Thornstad. Who their whole plan is to literally like get pedophilia labeled as a sexual preference. Instead of it being a crime that it is. 
they want to be able to go after kids, have sex with them, and think that that's not a problem. You know what I mean? So when I hear about EDP going after some kid, like, this is the first thing that pops into my head. You know what I mean? It's it's literally a sick, sick. The worst part about this group is that there's no defunct date. The group never went defunct. It's still active. Even though they, you know, it's said that they don't have a large following or anything like that. And they're regulated to just a couple small groups across America. The fact that they're still around, period, is the problem. You know, and I've seen a video like years ago where this old white dude was trying to like um, make a difference between uh, pedophiles and child molesters. Dude, the problem is you're sexually attracted to kids. That's the bottom line. That's the issue. You a grown ass man. Why are you sexually attracted to children? That's the problem. Regardless on it, first off, it. It, it don't matter if you act on it or not. The problem is you're sexually attracted to kids. I mean, if you act on it, I mean, hey, look, whatever comes to you, comes to you. You know, I'm not saying it, nothing publicly, but whatever happens to you, happens to you. And if you one of them weirdos that has those, those thoughts in your head, go get some help. Literally seek, because it's something that happened in your life that causes you to, to go that that way and that needs to come to an end bro but groups like this need to be destroyed but as far as edp goes and i think he's begging for sympathy and there's none for him to get like once you cross that line it's like that's it you know what i'm saying nobody wants to be around nobody like that anybody with some integrity at least so yeah that's uh that's my response to edp <laughs> so with that being said people um i appreciate y'all for joining me for the first live q a here on ads play 101 on tiktok if you're watching this on youtube uh you guys can follow me on my tiktok ads play 101 follow me on my youtube ads play 101 as well uh yeah man that's pretty much it first live q a hope you guys enjoyed it you know it, it went three times as long as what i originally planned i thought this was only going to be like a 25 minute thing but it was more questions than i realized and we're just gonna have to save some for next time i try to do these like once a month once every two months uh depending on the demand for it but with that being said man thank you guys for watching peace Remember, be humble in victory, gracious in defeat. Show no mercy in battle. World Warriors.